record. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kay Choi. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm joined by my friend Olivia today. If you're subscribed to my channel, you've probably seen that I've sat down with different friends to talk about their jobs and the industries that they work in. So I just wanted to continue that and sit down with Olivia. We got some hot tea here. It is snowing outside here in Michigan. So we're just staying warm, cozy on the mm -hmm. sofa here. Um, and we're just gonna chat about what Olivia does, how she got there, all of that. If you want to see more videos like this, then 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 please subscribe. Click the link down below and the like button and um, also the notification bell, all of that stuff. The what? Notification bell. Oh, the thing that like pops up. No, right that's there. a card. Oh, yeah. So much to learn. I don't, I don't watch YouTube. <laughs> watch linear television, guys. Stop watching YouTube. So the first question, which is a question that I think everybody gets asked is, what do you do? I work in television and I work in um, marketing specifically in the television industry. And our team creates and produces promotional content. Um, for all of our shows on our network. You know, there's a team that develops and creates the actual shows that everybody watches, but mm -hmm. to promote those shows and get people aware of, you know, what the show's about or what the next episode's about or just to kind of promote the network as a brand, um, there's a whole team that creates, you know, smaller promotional content. Olivia and I went to, went to high school and college together, um, but yeah, in college you were really, I know you were really interested in going into like film and TV and all mm -hmm. of that. So what was your progression like to get to where you are right now? Yeah, I've always been interested in like film and television ever since I was a kid. Like mm -hmm. I had like a little camera. I remember like my yeah. first camera was just this like toy camera. It was like this blue handheld camera that you like, <laughs> it was very, very simple. Like there's just a record button mm -hmm. and then a stop button. And then you would like plug it into your computer and it came with like a like a software and it was like for kids and I would like do a very basic How old were you? I was like maybe like 11 or something <laughs> like I, it was some toy camera that my yeah. parents bought me and then eventually like I, you know I got like a real camera but I was always kind of videotaping and then like editing things and then even in college mm -hmm. like Christine and I would like team up and mm -hmm. we would like make these the videos. videos in high school too we had like projects together yes. and like we would do videos for them instead of you know you could do like different yeah. formats for presentations and stuff yeah so yeah. I mean like I was always like geared towards like let's do a video because mm -hmm. I didn't want to stand in front of a group of people with a slide or something and then in school my internships were always sort of like marketing internships mm -hmm. but they were internships in, in like entertainment so it was like Live Nation you know, I did like digital marketing for Live Nation and then mm -hmm. I went into like Ticketmaster and, and that's more like music based, which wasn't necessarily something that I, I didn't want to go into like music industry. Mm -hmm. So there was that marketing side. And then in school, I studied <laughs> environmental economics, which is always a really funny thing to tell people <laughs> in at work, like in the, like if we ever talk about school and they're like, oh, what school did you go to? And like, what did you study? And I'm like, environmental economics. And they're like, <laughs> Oh, and I'm like, oh, yeah, super relevant to what I'm doing. I use it every day. Thank you, Berkeley. And that was, you know, that's a whole nother story. It was very interesting and I really liked it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think my heart was always set on film and entertainment, media. TV, media. Yeah. But when I got out of school, I was like, you know, I'm really going to do it. I'm going to get into TV. I'm not going to find like a job at like, you know, in the environmental like space, which mm -hmm. was like getting really popular, especially in NorCal. But I, can't, I moved back home to LA, tried being like a production assistant, like going on set. And so I, I really like had no clue how to like start. I was even like looking online for job postings for that kind of role. But like people don't really do that. It's, it's just all about like who you know. And like, mm -hmm. if you get one chance, you like get called back and then you meet people and then they call you back. And so funny story about how I like got on <laughs> set, which is there was a show on ABC called Castle, mm -hmm. which I watched all the time in college with some other friends. And I would follow the crew on Twitter because I liked seeing like, <laughs> like behind the scenes stuff, like yeah. of movies or like any, I like, soaked all that in and so I was following the crew and there was a second AD like a second assistant director I found her I guess and so I was following her and then I think randomly I was like I don't know like how to get in or whatever like how do I even do this and so I just messaged her on Twitter and I was like hi I just graduated if you 
have a moment or a second to like talk I'm like just really want to kind of get into this industry and Mm -hmm. um, I can send you my resume or whatever and then she actually messaged me back and was like send me your resume and she gave me her email (laughs) address Um, and so then I emailed her and then we actually met up for coffee and she was just like telling me about like what she does and like what the behind the scenes of the show is like and obviously I love the show so I'm like like, oh my god God, you know what this happens on the show so that was like really cool and she even was like yeah maybe eventually like I'll call you or you know if I don't give you a job like maybe you can come on set one day and visit and Mm -hmm. I was like like yes we actually didn't like talk after that for a few months it wasn't like immediately she called me the next week or something it did take a couple of months later mm-hmm. and at the time I got an internship not paid internship to work on the Paramount lot not with Paramount but um, there was actually um, a guy who graduated from Berkeley and he had started his own little production company and he got an office on the Paramount lot and so I got connected to him through some Berkeley friends and so I was just like hey, I can come and help you out or whatever. So that's what I was doing. I was going to the Paramount lot, maybe like twice a week, helping him with some Mm -hmm. stuff. And then one day, um, the second AD from Castle calls and says, my PA got sick. I need someone (laughs) in like two hours. Can you do it? (laughs) And I was like, oh, oh my gosh. And so I just said yes. And I wasn't even wearing the right clothes. Like when you're on set, you're on set for like 16 hours standing. You know, like, you want to be wearing, like, really good shoes, Mm -hmm. comfortable clothes. And I was more, like, dressed, like, for, like, an internship. So I was wearing, like, (laughs) these uncomfortable flats. And, like, I didn't have anything with me. But um, I said yes. And so drove downtown, met the second AD, and I had no clue what I was doing. And she was was just... Was it, like, your first time on set? Yeah, I've I've never been on a set. Like, I had no clue. And, like, everyone's talking on their walkie-talkies, and they're saying all these lingos. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Like, I don't know what that means. And, like, I'm also, like, directionally challenged, too. So yes. they'd be, like... Pause there, like... <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't know my left to my... From yeah, my right. like, if I'm driving, like, I cannot have Olivia be navigating. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be like, oh, okay, like, turn right up there. <laughs> turn right. And she'd be, like, turning right. And I'd be like, no, no! And she was like, you literally told me to turn right. And I was like, I meant left. Like, it happens all the time. It's okay. Sometimes I put the wrong shoe on the wrong foot. But then, you know, then yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I realized yeah. it quickly. But yeah. anyway, back to it was your first time on set. Yeah. You're directionally challenged. You don't know what people are saying. Yeah. And like, they're, they were like, oh, the van's on the northwest side. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, do I look like I'm a compass? Like, I don't <laughs> know where that is. But obviously, I was so, like, so happy to be on the set of Castle. Like, yeah. to see the actors and whatever. And... Um, I was really managing sort of the extras, you know, they'd shoot the extras, the extras would get off set and like take a break or something. And when they need to be brought back, I'm Mm -hmm. pretty much, Mm -hmm. you know, the PA that goes and gets them. I had to like replace like walkie talkie batteries, (laughs) things like that. But, um, basically I was working for like 16 hours. Um, I think I got off at like 4am or 5am. So that was kind of like my first on set experience, which was really exciting and really cool and really scary. And then she ended up calling me back for another episode. And then she was also working on a short film with some other producers that did like, like a producer on bones and things like that. They kind of got together and they kind of did their own little short film. A little indie film. A little indie yeah. film. It was like kind of like a horror film, a scary film. It was, um, <laughs> it was like comedy horror. Yeah. Comedy yeah. horror. I was a PA helping with the art department. And so the art department, you know, designs a set and makes it look like a real place, not just like some empty room. Mm-hmm. Right. If, if it's supposed to be in this case, a sorority house, like it looks like a sorority house Mm -hmm. like they put photos of like sorority Mm -hmm. girls and they have like the greek letters Mm -hmm. and just anything you would find in a sorority house it was decorated and because it was also a horror like a horror film you know there was some like fake blood (laughs) and like broken chairs like there was that aspect of it that was kind of like the extent of like my onset pa experience and like Mm -hmm. you know we had like a little premiere and i brought christina with me i'll insert a picture yeah (laughs) and like my name was on the credits Mm -hmm. and that was like really cool so that was like the extent of your pa which was production assistant experience like onset or like that's how you kind of got into the industry yeah i mean like there are different types of pas Mm -hmm. like you know there's like an office pa there's Mm -hmm. you know all that stuff like so i guess like anyone who would want to like be a PA there's always different Mm. types um for me specifically I was like on set 
there are PAs that are like in the production office or whatever, like, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But yes, I was a PA on set. Is being a PA typically like that first like foot in the door to get Mm -hmm. into like film and TV production and all of that? Yeah, I mean, if you really kind of want to be in that area of like making television and like making movies, you're going to always start off on sort of like this entry level PA position specifically if like you want to do like production. You know, I think there are people that want to be creatives and I think, you know, you might, people might go the PA route or maybe you're like an intern in like Mm -hmm. a creative department or you're like, if you want to be a writer, like you're a writer's assistant. So there's like a bunch Mm -hmm. of different like entry level jobs across sort of the entertainment industry, depending on specifically like where you want to go. I know because I know like already a little bit about, you know, all your career progression and stuff. Then you kind of shifted more into like the marketing side, right? Yeah. So then... What, how did that, how did you go from, you know, being on set, doing some jobs here and there, ooh, ooh, spilling tea everywhere, Road tea. spilling the tea. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, so tell me how you then kind of got into the marketing side. So after a while, like, like being on set's really tough. Mm. You know, it's 16 hour days, like several like weeks and weeks of that and even people on set, like the crew, okay. like they're all like in their like 40s and 50s, these guys that I would talk to and they would be like, don't do it. And I'm like, what? How can you tell me not to like pursue my dream? <laughs> um, and they were like, you know, like I, I never see my kids. It's mm. like, I've done this for so long. It's hard for me to just like go and change into another job that's a little more steady and you know, a little less like exhausting because mm-hmm. like you're physically doing stuff all day. So I was kind of like, you know, I like having a work-life balance. I, I think maybe it would have been fun for the first, like, couple of years, but it's really grueling and it's mm-hmm. really tough. And so, like, respect to all the people that do that now and keep doing it because you really have to want it and you really have to, like, give it your all. And it's very tiring. So I thought maybe, you know, maybe I can find something that's, like, in the middle. So I, then I started looking into applying to, like, media networks, like, media companies for a job. And I got an internship at um, a network in their digital marketing and it made sense because all of my internships in college were like Like social media social media like marketing that's kind of how i got this internship pretty like easily because i had already built up that sort Mm -hmm. of marketing when you were in college when i was in college um and so and it was pretty still soon after college i really only did the pa thing for like Mm -hmm. a year and so i got into that and i was like you know, like doing like social media marketing, like on Twitter, on Facebook, got to meet other people who did something called at the time on air promos, Mm. which is like now what I do. And it was a team that that was like, oh, like you're in the marketing department. So you're your objective is like mark it's marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, But yet, you know, you get to do production and you get to do like creative and like you get to be on set and you get to shoot and which is the stuff that I did like and so it was kind of the best of both worlds it was mm-hmm. like the marketing that I enjoyed and I had interned you know I had done internships for it and then there was like that production piece that wasn't gonna be like 16 hour days <laughs> but I would still get to have a piece of it and so I like got really close to that team and once my internship ended this other role came up and you know they're kind of sister networks mm-hmm. and so you know, they kind of helped put my resume to the top of the list and, yeah. you know, had my interview and, you know, the rest is history and I got the job. Um, now you've been there for five years? Five years. Yeah. Five and a half? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like January. On your, like, day-to-day, obviously, with many jobs, like, every day is different, mm-hmm. but, like, what are some of your just general responsibilities? My, like, main role is managing and making sure that all of those promos, like, get through the pipeline but for example if we're promoting a, a series or a specific episode mm-hmm. the writer will like watch the sh- episode mm-hmm. you know write the write a script of like what are the best moments of this mm-hmm. episode what's the hook what's gonna get someone who sees my promo to be like oh i want to watch that episode right mm-hmm. so the creative team writes that you know and i help sort of pull push that through in terms of like approvals and so once the script's approved it goes on to the rough cut phase which Mm -hmm. is where you're editing everything together and you're just taking like show clips and you're building up your script um in a video form and that will go through several phases like the creative director will have notes like you know make it a little more creative or add this sound bite Mm -hmm. or change the music here um and then once creatively it's in a good place 
there's a whole other like set of people like stakeholders that also have to prove you know there's like the legal department we have mm. to make sure we're not stealing ip from yeah. someone or like breaking like an agreement with the series that produced the show or with that actor um mm. you know just if it all falls in within the agreements that the contracts that have been signed like then we're good and then there's the standards and practices which they're just making sure that everything is appropriate <laughs> And so, like, you can't throw in some F-bombs or, like, any, like, nudity or, you know, things like that, depending on um, sort of the demo that we're going for. They're checking it, and then once sort of we've hit, you know, all those, like, approvals, Mm -hmm. I help, like, take it through sort of, like, finishing. And there's, like, online finishing and, like, audio mixing. Mm. So online is just, like, that's, like, the video portion. It's just making sure that the shots are being used are, like, the final shots. Like, it's high res, the color corrected, mm-hmm. adding in any special graphics and having the final graphics. And then there's the audio mix. So whether we have to record VO um, and like all the sound effects and all the sound mm-hmm. bites from the show, it's there's a person that like puts all of that together so it sounds really mm-hmm. good. And then they'll do a final mix and then basically you marry those together and then it gets outputted into like our broadcast specs. Mm-hmm. Or if it's for YouTube, we can also export in YouTube specs. Um, etc. And so then, you know, I help that kind of go through the system. And another big piece is that once it's in our system, I actually have to watch it Mm -hmm. and just make sure that everything looks good. And if like, there's a weird shot, like what, there's still green screen in there or like, oh, this (laughs) graphic, there's a typo, you know, Mm -hmm. like that, a lot of people are checking it before that. So it's not like I'm catching that every time. It's just every once in a while there's like Mm -hmm. a slip up and so it's just it's that last line of like making sure that it looks good and because once I click approve it pretty much that's what's going to go on tv or Mm -hmm. that's what's going to go on youtube and that's it after Mm -hmm. that and so I know that sometimes you go on set to like shoot promos right what you were describing was like if you're like maybe taking clips from a yeah that's more like post yeah but then sometimes you go on set too right yeah and so what's the difference between like what your role is, you know, today when you go on set versus like when you're a PA and, you know, Mm -hmm. working Uh, the whole day? Yeah, I like this question because (laughs) basically the answer is that I'm on the client side, Mm. which is very, very nice. (laughs) Um, You know, as I was saying, when I was a PA on set, I was running around like getting people batteries and like, Mm -hmm. I never had to get somebody coffee, but pretty much if someone was like, I need a coffee, I would be the one to go get it. Um, so that's what it was like to be a PA on set Mm -hmm. and the difference now (laughs) being on set in my role or with my team is that I'm still the client. And so there's, I remember like when I was on my first shoot, which was probably my favorite shoot is a shoot in Malibu for three days. Mm -hmm. And basically I'm like on the beach for three days. Um, and I'm not running around like getting people coffee or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the moment I realized like the difference was when someone came like a PA came up to me and was like would you like a breakfast burrito and a I was breakfast like, yeah burrito? I was, it was like in the morning you know and I was like a breakfast what? that's amazing yeah and they're like what kind of what would you like what would you like in your breakfast burrito <laughs> and I was like oh my god um egg sausage like <laughs> potatoes and they're like and they would bring it to me and like I was like this is so nice <laughs> Um, <laughs> and that was like, that's sort of when the you difference. saw the difference. Yeah. That's when I saw the difference. And so when you go, you're just kind of making sure that things are going according to. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. there's that whole like development phase, the creative mm-hmm. phase of like cr- doing the scripts and like in that, in that, um, period, like my team is just making sure that like the talents being requested, the dates, shoot dates are being logged. We go on location scouts, you know, the production company will find like different locations that match sort of what we're looking for. And, you know, our team also goes out and just mm-hmm. looks at the location. And then on the day of like, it's pretty much just goes pretty smoothly according to like schedule and according to plan. And for us, we're just making sure that we're getting exactly what it is that mm-hmm. we need. While having a breakfast burrito. While having a breakfast burrito <laughs> and like crafty is like the best thing. Crafty? It's, yeah, crafty. It's What's like crafty? basically it's like all the food and the snacks that oh, are like, like craft services. Yeah, craft. Oh yeah, craft services. We call it crafty. Your little lingo. See, yeah. yeah now see? we know the lingo. Yeah. <laughs> and like when you get a really good like craft services, uh-huh. like oh my gosh, it makes <laughs> such a difference. What is the best thing about? working in like the media entertainment tv like i don't know you know that realm Mm -hmm. and then what's the worst thing 
I didn't realize this is such a hard question. Yeah. <laughs> there is no, like, there's nothing bad about it. It's perfect. <laughs> for my team, and, like, I think this also stems from, like, the company I work for and, like, my boss specifically. And it's just, like, at the end of the day, we make promos. Like, we're not saving lives. <laughs> we're just making the world a little more entertaining for people. And so I think um, when you're really in, like, in it and like you're creating this content and it's just like crazy and you're hitting trying to hit deadlines and you're trying to hit budgets oh Mm -hmm. oh, and that's like another thing like our team manages like budgets too Mm -hmm. so it's like Mm -hmm. you can't just do whatever like pie in the sky creative and just do it like you have to do it in the right time and in the right um amount of money Mm -hmm. um and so like that's can be very stressful and so i think it's you have to like remind yourself that like we're just making promos and to not like get so Mm. uptight about it and it feels like it's going to be the end of the world if like we don't get something Mm -hmm. in on time or if we're late or if we don't get the creative like exactly the way someone envisioned it and Mm -hmm. that's kind of the thing that can be challenging and then the best part about it though is that you are helping to create like fun stuff fun stuff (laughs) like and that's why like uh, when I was growing up that's why I loved film I love like movies and television Mm -hmm. was like you make millions of people feel that Mm. with the with the content and that you produce and to work with creative people and like buying in you know when like you're sitting with a creative and they're Mm -hmm. just like getting into the world and describing (laughs) and then you're gonna have this and then I was thinking this and and they're like painting this picture and I love like falling into that Mm -hmm. and being there with them taking that abstract creative like Mm -hmm. sort of idea and then to like bring it to life and then to capture that you know mm-hmm. on film on, on a video and then putting it together and creating this final piece and then like having it kind of go out there yeah that part's like it's always really rewarding cool. yeah that's yeah. like super fun there isn't like too much consistency yet to these videos i do want to like make it more of a consistent series um but i think a consistent question i've asked in all of these is just what advice would you give to somebody who is interested in entering into this field. And of course, it's the field itself is very wide, you know, and as Mm -hmm. you were saying before, there's lots of different ways you can go into it, but just um, just in general, (laughs) some advice. Um, One is to be open to like any and every opportunity. Like, I don't think it always just goes as planned, right? So it's like, if you're looking for a specific door to open, like you don't want to miss the window that opened right there and we're like you know ooh, <laughs> nice um, metaphor there <laughs> like even when i was like interning at paramount and like you know the second ad called it's just not the way i thought it was gonna happen like i wasn't ready for it like i remember actually being a little hesitant about it and um i called my mom and my, my mom was like what are you doing like, isn't this what you were waiting for like go do it and i'm like <laughs> okay okay mom thanks you know and so i went and so like it just kind of you just have to be like open you don't want to be so like focus on this path that you think you need to be on and and not like be looking up to see mm-hmm. like what else there could be that could help expand you know like your knowledge and your experience being like a good, kind <laughs> being a nice person especially in the entertainment industry where like connections do mm-hmm. matter mm-hmm. like it helps especially like, like I was saying like to be a PA there's no job like site like that just says like PA number one PA number two <laughs> you know like for this show and that show it's it's sort of like all a mess and you really don't know what you're getting into. And so a lot of people really rely on hoping that someone calls them back. And as you get called mm. back, you meet more people and then, you know, you can introduce other people and then they all go off and have their own projects and then mm. they'll think of you and they'll call you, you know. So in their minds, people have like a list of potentials that they can always just go down and call to like mm-hmm. do a project. Even though like I'm not necessarily like in that freelance sort of world like I work with like different vendors and Mm. different um people um all the time and so it's important to like be nice and be a kind person and be obviously very hard working and competent but if you're nice and you're a good person um it's gonna go a long way cool (laughs) that's it thanks for watching (laughs) so that's it for this video uh thank you Oli Olivia uh for sitting down drinking some tea. Thanks for having me. Just talking all about your job. I hope this was helpful for anyone who is interested just in the media entertainment industry. 
Um, oh, I hope it's helpful. I don't know. I, I don't know is. what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I like being behind camera. I don't like being on camera. You did a fine, wonderful job. <laughs> so thank you. And thanks everyone for watching. Bye. Bye.